things that we've heard from a few astronauts is that they report hearing the clanking sound every now and then of debris possibly hitting the ISS. <laughs> is that anything that you experienced while you were up there? No, to be honest, I have okay. not. The space station, uh, fortunately, is is well protected by uh, micrometeorite uh, debris shields. There is like this this big safety pizza box. The idea is that if you do get an impact, the 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 object that piece of debris is going to impact that shield first, and that shield is going to kind of not necessarily stop it but break it up in smaller parts so that when it does impact the hull, the actual hull of the space station, that impact is softened and distributed uh, on a number of smaller debris on a greater surface. And that will hopefully lead to the fact that it will not like breach through the hull. My yeah. Uh, so I, I, I think it would be difficult to have, you know, if, if you're thinking about really like hearing like, a, you know, a, a little <laughs> stone or a piece of something like hitting a metal um, wall oh, and hearing that kind of sound, I, I think that would be quite difficult. In your time in space, did you ever see any signs of debris or um, impacts or little craters or anything? I did not. <laughs> go out on a spacewalk during uh, my mission, unfortunately. Um, this is the situation where you would uh, mostly get in contact with the issue of uh, debris. Um, well, first of all, there is a very small chance, but not, not completely zero, that you actually get yourself impacted by a piece of debris while you're out there. That obviously would be bad, but again, the probability, of course, is very low. But what you do have to deal with is impacts on the handrails. So when you're outside doing a spacewalks, you use the handrails and your hands to translate along the structure, get you to your workplace, holding on to stabilize your position. And you're doing that um, um, um. through your pressure gloves. And it can be quite dangerous if there was an impact of a debris on one of those handrails. that you're using and touching with your gloves, it's going to leave a small crater and that crater is not is going to have quite sharp edges and that can cause damage to your gloves. So we pay attention to that a lot in many ways. On that handrail you really have to pay attention because we know that there might be a sharp edge from a debris impact. <laughs> the robotic arm camera, new impacts that, you know, need to be mapped tool world, universe, those dangerous uh, sharp points. But yeah, inside, uh, of, of course, I mean, you, you don't have access directly to the hull, so it, it's very difficult to see any damage. The only place where you would see it is on windows. And uh, in fact, there are some impact um, damage points on, on the cupola windows. I, I remember one that was quite prominent. Uh, you, you, people could probably even see. Yeah. Like, there's like a um, leak patching uh, tool bag on, on orbit where, you know, you could possibly use it to at least temporarily patch up a, a, a breach in, in the hole if it wasn't like completely catastrophic. And then, of course, you would even have to try to seal up that module and, and leave. <laughs> Like on the space station, how many of these would you have? Uh, seven, because we have seven windows. What happens if you get a leak on that? Um, then you have a leak. Houston, we have a problem. I've destroyed that technology. You just have a leak. And, 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 and what you would do you is... You lose air. Yeah, you would probably seal the whole cupola off and then uh, there's probably a plan I don't know off the top of my head but there's probably a plan for replacing 
the the mechanism might require spacewalk. How can you operate a lid on the outside of the space station by manipulating something mechanical on the inside of the space station without losing air pressure? It's it's called real good engineering. The the only limit to a human future is in our own imagination. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there is like this this big safety pizza box around space station and any debris that is uh, tracked and expected to come with a certain likelihood within this big pizza box around space station <laughs> will be a cause. But it's not like this clear and present danger, like you know, yeah. you're worrying all the time. I hope that a debris is not going to hit me today. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Space Station has been up there for uh, over 20 years now. And do we, again, there's been many, many debris impacts, but none of them has been catastrophic or even close to being catastrophic. Um, space Station, Space Walkers, uh, it's obviously, it damages the solar panels. And so the efficiency of the solar panels goes down over time. In fact, we are replacing slowly and going to replace all the or, or at least uh, complement the old solar panels with new ones. Uh, not, not um, the windows of, of the cupola will probably get uh, a few more impacts. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like um, insects on a wind windscreen of a car, but <laughs> more exciting. Hopefully, um, never more than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so for anyone uh, interested in applying to become an astronaut, of course, we have the uh, astronaut selection happening now. People can apply uh, services to uh, to the citizens of, of the planet that uh, we sometimes do not appreciate that much just because we take them for granted, like, you know, running water and electricity. But if all of a sudden you turn those things off, then... Um, you realize how important they are. Extremely unlikely scenario, uh, then you would be in a scenario of a depressurization to an emergency scenario. It's, it's, it's not a good thing. <laughs> in, in, in the worst case scenario, so in a more realistic scenario, you would uh, have to start looking for this leak, uh, you know, kind of like in the movies. Yeah. <laughs> um, if something like that happens, then again, it's obvious. Um, so that that's what we basically train to do. Sounds like it's mostly uh, under control, you have people on the ground watching for these big objects, but as you say, this is a real issue for all of space flight and everything we rely on. So yeah, thanks very much for giving us this insight. It's really fascinating.